okay so now let me give you another result okay this is actually extremely powerful result okay which will uh which will give you you know uh the cop douglas because we still haven't done anything about the cop douglas except the picture okay uh you know uh so this result will give you that uh you know a function like this x alpha y beta okay where alpha plus beta equals one and alpha and beta are non-negative okay a, a function like this uh is actually concave okay and we'll show this okay is that fine okay so let me just state uh, the result first okay and then we'll prove it okay uh, so here is the result f is non decreasing okay f is non decreasing non negative real valued function okay non negative real valued function defined on rn plus okay defined on rn plus and suppose that f is quasi concave and homogeneous of degree one and f is quasi concave and homogeneous of degree one okay so basically i've added some conditions along with quasi concavity i have added that the function is homogeneous of degree one it's non-decreasing non-negative real valued function defined on rn plus uh, so you know it turns out that quasi concavity plus these three you know whatever number of properties okay uh, plus all these properties will guarantee concavity okay uh, so this implies that f is is concave okay so then f is a concave function okay uh, so notice that you know all the cobb douglas utility functions you know uh, uh where alpha plus beta is equal to one you know they'll they'll satisfy this property you know we know that the level curves look like this we know that uh the upper level set is convex so it is quasi concave uh and uh you know so if we know that this is what is true about all the uh cobb douglas function where alpha plus beta is equal to one okay uh, so it is homogeneous of degree one as well okay uh so this means that you know uh, all these functions are actually concave you know x to the power one by three y to the power two by three that's a concave function x to the power half y to the power half that's a concave function okay and so on and so forth okay and uh please note that this is actually you know just true about you know more more uh more uh functions you know than just cobb douglas i mean uh because this is a more general result okay it's not just uh you know applicable for cobb douglas so basically it's a special case okay cobb douglas with alpha plus beta equal to one is a special special case of this okay okay so let's prove it okay uh so how do we prove this okay so i want to show that f is a concave function so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick arbitrary x prime x double prime okay and uh, uh so f is a function from rn plus okay to r okay uh, because it's non-negative real valued so i've just uh, written r plus here okay so x prime x double prime uh uh is in rn plus okay so i'm going to pick these two points arbitrary points from rn plus and consider arbitrary lambda between zero and one okay and i'm going to show that uh, you know that inequality holds okay which is f of lambda x prime plus one minus lambda x double prime okay so i'm going to show that this inequality holds okay so are you ready can we show this okay fine 
Okay, so I've I've cons you know I've picked arbitrary x prime x double prime arbitrary lambda. So I'm going to show it in few steps. Okay, uh, so the first thing that I'm going to, basically I'm going to take cases. Okay, and then then show this. Uh, so case one. Suppose f x prime and f x double prime are both zero. Suppose they are both zero. What do you think about this inequality? Can I say that this is true? Why? So what of like what have I written here that will help me to prove that this inequality holds when both are zero? Why is this greater than or equal to zero? I mean, why is this greater than or equal to zero basically you know because this is zero this is zero absolutely you know f is non-negative real value function uh so uh uh so uh you know uh this is true okay uh okay great okay okay now let's do the case two okay suppose fx prime is positive and fx double prime is zero okay now what about this one Okay, can you tell me is this true? Just just tell me if if this is true or not. And tell me why is this true? Okay, use uh, you know the information that is given in the theorem. Tell me why is this true? Okay. And if you think this is not true, tell me why this is not true. Absolutely. You know, f is non decreasing, you know. So you have just taken out some uh, you know non negative you know component of the of 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 uh, lambda x prime plus minus lambda x double prime, so you've reduced it. You know, uh, you have reduced uh, lambda x prime one plus one minus lambda x double prime to lambda x prime, and since f is non-decreasing, so this is true. Now, do you agree that because it is homogeneous of degree one, this is true? Yes. Yes or no? Okay. Now, if I add zero to it. Do you agree it will still be true? Yes. So basically, I've shown that in this particular case also this inequality holds. Okay. Is that fine? Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, case three is basically just analogous. You know, just take fx prime to be zero and fx double prime to be positive and just show it in exactly the same way. So I'm going to skip that. You just prove it yourself. Just write this yourself. Okay. Write this argument yourself for fx prime zero and fx double prime positive okay do that yourself okay now what i'm going to do is i'll uh, show that for the fourth case that's the one which will require you know basically two or three additional steps okay uh, so fx prime is positive and fx double prime is positive okay so i want to use uh, i want to actually uh, show that even in this case this inequality holds okay and what do i know about f okay so far i haven't used quasi concavity you know uh, so it turns out that now it will be needed okay uh, so let's just uh, let's just uh, try to show this okay uh, so let me ask you this question what can you say about this value what is this value so when i say that i'm going to divide this vector x prime by this number f x prime I'm basically taking the entire vector dividing it by this number fx prime. Okay, uh, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so you can think of this as lambda as one upon fx prime. Okay, so can you tell me what is this value? What is this value? This is one very good. Okay, what about this one? Okay, what about this one? This is also one, right? Yes. Now, because these are one, okay. If I do something like this, okay, uh, f of lambda x prime upon f x prime plus one minus lambda x double prime f x double prime. Do you agree that this is greater than or equal to min of these two because f is quasi concave? 
yes or no because f is cosi concave uh, so f of let me use theta here okay instead of lambda let me use theta okay do you agree this is greater than or equal to min of this comma this yes or no so basically this is greater than or equal to one do you agree okay why because f is cos i concave yes or no okay now what do i want to show remember i want to show that this is true this inequality is true okay okay so basically i have to you know somehow write uh, because this is true for all theta okay this inequality is true for all theta so i have to somehow get to this inequality okay uh, so what i can do is this okay i can consider theta to be equal to lambda fx prime upon lambda fx prime plus one minus lambda fx double prime Okay, so let's consider this theta. Do you agree this theta is between zero and one? Yes or no? Yes, okay. Now if this theta is between zero and one, you know, if I plug this here, because this is true for all theta, this inequality is true for all theta. So if I plug this here, this is also true for this particular theta. Yes or no? Okay, so let me put that here. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna get what? F. Uh, so let me put that. Uh, so fx prime will cancel fx prime. Do you agree? I'll get in the numerator lambda x prime. Yes or no? Yes. And in the denominator, I'll get this term. Yes or no? okay and what about the second term second term second term will be what one minus this times this so do you agree that i'll end up canceling fx double prime so i'll get one minus lambda x double prime do you agree i'm going to get this yes or no exactly now we can use the homogen id property and take this out okay and take it to the right hand side because this is positive it's not going to switch the inequality and this will give me yes any questions okay so basically the immediate uh, consequence of you know what we have just done is uh, that you know all the cobb douglas utility function with this property okay uh, with alpha plus beta equal to one alpha is greater than or equal to zero beta greater than or equal to zero they are all concave functions is that okay in fact we have not just proved for two dimensional functions because if you remember our function was in r n plus okay so we have also proved that if you have you know x1 alpha 1 x2 alpha 2 and x n alpha n where summation alpha i is 1 and alpha i are non negative okay uh, then this is concave is that fine okay okay so uh what about this so suppose x alpha y beta and alpha plus beta is greater than one what can i say about this one well i know they are quasi concave that's not a problem what can i say about you know whether they are concave or not remember we did one case like that you know x times y we have shown that that's not concave right by restricting you know the domain to y equal to x so similarly i can do the same thing here 
notice that if i restrict my domain uh, you know to y equal to x i will get something like this x alpha plus beta and when alpha plus beta is greater than one this is not a concave function right Yes, so this means that, you know, this is not a concave function. You know, this particular function is not concave. Okay, it is not concave. Have you understood this? Okay, it is quasi-concave, but it is not concave. What about this function? What can you say about this one? Anybody? Okay, remember increasing concave transformation of a concave function is concave. Now, do you agree this is a concave function? Yes, because this is homogeneous of degree one. Now, if I raise this whole thing to the power alpha plus beta, so basically I'm taking a to the power alpha plus beta. What can you say about this particular function where alpha plus beta is less than one? Is this concave single dimensional function? Is this concave where alpha plus beta is less than one? It is increasing also, right? It's increasing. It's increasing and concave transformation of this particular function. So basically, we are going to get that this is also concave. Okay, is concave. Have you all understood this? Yes or no? Okay, so basically, you know, we got that X alpha Y beta is concave for alpha plus beta less than or equal to one. Okay, and alpha is non-negative, beta is non-negative. Okay. 